Hello, welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for the, another Real House for another review of the Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is the reunion part three, and this is episode twenty, and this is first season. I want to say, hold on, let me double check. One moment. The way I be forget the way I be forgetting these things. Um, it'll be in the description. I'm not gonna do this. Well, okay. So you notice know uh, my setup is very very different because this video is not gonna be that long. I'm not gonna hold you. Um, I did not feel like it was worth setting up for this. Um, because I don't know if it's just me, but part three of this reunion, I feel like they could just extend it part two. Yeah, um, I thought we were going to get into more things the way they set this up. But part three was just kind of a letdown. And you want to know the reason why? I cannot stand John Jansen. <laughs> and this was all about the DUI, John Jansen and all. And we just gave this man so much airtime for this third part. Like, literally what he wanted. He got all the airtime. It actually made him look horrible, though. But, like, because it was so focused on him, it just made me literally not like any of the third part of the reunion. Yes, Shannon got Alexis together. Um, he, um, All the ladies actually were pretty much, like, ganging up on, like, Alexis. The only two that were, like, kind of on mute was Jen and um, Katie, Katie was like, I don't want to get involved. But then I, we'll get into that when we get there. Um, but like overall, like Tamara kind of turned on her. Um, well, Tamara was actually on mute, but she was actually giving her support to Shannon and actually chiming, speaking up at certain points when and basically just saying, girl, that's not true to even like on the same side as Shannon. So it like. Alexis crashed and burned in this third part. And one thing that Shannon trumped her on and was going to, we all knew that, was like, you're the friend of. You can go now. Okay. You said what you said. You can go now. And I did like that. And also like that Shannon, even though they gave John Jansen all the airtime in the world, and there was some development on the things that John Jansen said, that could have really broken Shannon and it clearly did, but at least she didn't let Alexis see that. Um, because it's on national TV, she's still solid. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of just like, I, I did not like this third part. <laughs> I didn't like it. I didn't like it. Even what they did at the very end, which was surprising and I didn't see that coming. I still wasn't here for it. And I don't know. It, it gave me, it, the, the end gave me the ick. The ending gave me the ick. So without further ado, let's kind of get into it. So the episode continues where we left off, where Shannon is literally going all the way off on Alexis, rightfully so. And she is still being John Jansen's mouthpiece and she will not stop being John Jansen's mouthpiece to the point where, um, Emily was getting involved, but like one thing they actually kind of did like was, um, I did, but I didn't. So I kind of wish in all the other parts of the reunion, whenever Emily was get, putting herself involved in things had nothing to do with her, Andy was shutting it down. Um, well, wasn't shutting it down all the other times, but now because it's Alexis, he's shutting it down. And I just wish he would have did that all the other times because Emily did not need to be here. She had no storyline. There was no reason for her to be there. And honestly, frankly, this can be her last time being being there. She did not offer much of anything. I know she kept saying attorney, attorney, attorney. She always led everything with like my thoughts as an attorney. Child, come to find out. I did some research after watching, after my first review and even a little bit of the second re review. She got her law degree from a school that's no longer accredited. Number one. Number two, she is a patent lawyer. 
So she's not even like a defense attorney or any of the things that she keeps speaking about. She's none of those type of attorneys. That's like me going to an attorney whose specialty is closing houses on um, having them defend my case against like if I like had like a murder conviction. No one would do that because it doesn't make any sense. It's like also like that's like having like saying you're a doctor. But like you're actually really a dentist. Yes, you're, that is a type of doctor. But I do not want a dentist operating on my arm. I mean, just let's just let's just call a thing a thing. So like, and then some of the things that she said, like, as an attorney, no, especially when it came to some of the gin and finance situation things that they were talking about in part two, it's like, no, as someone with common sense who has financial literacy, this is not a good idea. You shouldn't sign something that you can't like sign and agree to pay on something that you can't afford or you're not sure you if you can afford it or not. That's common sense. That's not called being, that's not a lawyer. <laughs> anyway, so she, but basically Shannon and Alexis pretty much went back and forth for most of this reunion um, because Alexis was there for most of the third part of the reunion. I thought she was going to be gone at the very beginning of it, but no, she was there for like a lot of it. And that might be the other reason why I did not love this third part. I was just kind of irritated at this point because I cannot stand Jesus jugs. I do not like her. Um, and so I want her off my screen, but then it's like, okay, if you want annoying, let's make annoying more annoying. Let's add John Jansen to the mix. And so they just kept showing all these unair footages of John Jansen and her in her confessional and he's speaking about everything. And a lot of it is just lies after lies after lies after lies. Even though she's claiming that Shannon's doing all this lying, but only thing I could see is that John Jansen's lying. And let's get to what he said. One of the things he said, because he said a lot, but the one particular thing, throw, throw the whole entire man in the garbage. Okay, anyway, I, I had to take a little bit of a break because of, hold on. You see her. The, the woman who really runs this household. Whisper. Um, <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's talk more about it. So John Jansen in his confessional, he was talking about the timeline of Alexis and his relationship, saying it's real, it's not for the show, it's this and this and that. And then he says his res revelation that him and Shannon have been broken up for over a year before Alexis and him got together. John, 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 you were on this show with Shannon last season as Shannon's boyfriend. That was last year. That was probably less than, less than a year ago, actually. So you mean to tell me you were broken up with Shannon? If you were broken up with Shannon for a whole entire year, you should have, you and Alexis would not have been together until like, well, I don't know, like the filming of this season that's coming up at like for 2025. Yeah. So we knew right then there he's lying. And yes, Shannon, it, but I get what he's trying, like he basically spend it to, to, to meet his narrative, but in reality, and I've been in one, I've been in one of these relationships before too. And I'm just like, Shannon, I feel for her, but at the same time, I'm just like, girl, I just don't understand how she got in this type of relationship at this time, this age of her life. Like, this type of relationship I was in when I was like, I want to say 21 to like 23-ish, um, 24-ish. Um, I had this guy who I was on and off with for years to the point, and I even lost, I almost lost friends over this dude. Like, it was bad. Um, like... <laughs> that's actually when I actually got my um, DUI. Um, so toxic relationships can lead you to being a toxic person yourself. And I'm sure Shannon wasn't perfect before, but like usually those type of men, like a John Jansen of it all, 
they cling themselves onto people or women, particularly who are of a weaker state, who are very vulnerable or in their vulnerable state and come off as a knight in shining armor. They love bomb you at the beginning. They say all these amazing things about you until they hook, line, and sinker you. And then it's like a toxic love hate thing that on. Yeah, side note, I am not editing that out. So the reason why I gave that look is because Whisper decided to jump on my lap after I've been trying to like cuddle and jump, jump and hang out with her all morning before I had my clothes on. And now I have my clothes on and I'm wearing black, um, black leggings and I want to wear them later on today, which it looks like I'm not going to be able to, or at least I'm going to, br um, going to lint brush the hell out of them because she's trying to put cat hair all over it. Because she decides, oh, I'm going to sit on your lap now. And I'm like, I've been trying to get you to sit on my lap where I had nothing else to do but to hang out with you. And now <laughs> when I'm doing something, now you want to like do all the quality time stuff. I'm like, girl. Anyway, this video is not about my cat. But anyway, you get the gist though. Like, I just don't understand. Like, I hopefully Shannon will learn from this and learn to never date someone who's like this ever again so that was one of the things that he said in his confessional and then the other thing is one of the last lines he said was literally verbatim lying that he said to shannon before too and shannon visibly could not hold back that she was hurt by this but she tried to keep a strong front because alexis was still there um but then went back to like just get going after alexis because alexis was still just being mean and cruel and all the other women started just like really trying to actually gina especially was trying was literally the most sound did not lead with like emotions or nothing like that she was like alexis like i really just wish you know how to put yourself in shan's shoes and she just would not do it like the funny the sad thing is when it comes to alexis is like no, no one wants her back after this season. No one. Number one. Number two, all the women, even Tamara, before she stepped on stage, you know, at part two, the reunion, was trying to tell her, girl, lead with your own thing and not being John Jansen's mouthpiece. And that is like, that was literally Alexis' downfall. Like, if this was her way of getting back on the show, we don't know what's going on with her. She basically made her storyline Shannon and John and made herself and got herself in the middle of it, thinking that would be enough to keep her, be enough to get her on the show. It's like, no, because now this is about you. You made it about you. You basically did what Emily has done this whole entire reunion, interject yourself in someone else's business. That's all you did, which back to the original point. Emily should not come back after this. Anyway, <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then, so that happened, and then Alexis and Emily went back and forth a little bit, not as much as we thought they would have went back and forth because, again, Andy kind of shut it down. And also, the other thing that was so aggravating and annoying about um, Alexis is she was demanding people not to interrupt her, but yes, she interrupted everyone on that stage. Like it literally was a tornado when she was on stage. And then finally, when it was time for her to leave, Shannon was like, you can go now. Bye. Bye, friend of. <laughs> I lived for it. So that was really the highlight of part three was Shannon just getting Alexis together light on i mean emily didn't really do anything great she actually then reverted back because then after break and after um after everyone kind of excused themselves um if you know shannon then used the opportunity at that moment to break down over everything that happened because she was just like i just can't believe this i can't believe that this man who i loved is just trying to humiliate me in the worst ways possible which is literally what he's been trying to do <laughs> And side note, don't mind me. My allergies are allergy-ing. Um, change in weather. And if you haven't figured out, it's already giving winter here. And I hate it. <laughs> it snowed on Thursday. And my privileged annoying ass 
as soon as it snowed is right when I decided, yeah, I'm booking a flight to Arizona. I am not dealing with this the whole entire winter. Absolutely not. So I already have a, I already have a flight booked. I already have like one of my Airbnbs booked. I already have my rental car booked. Child. <laughs> I know. I'm not right. I'm really not okay. But it is what it is. I, um, as someone who's lived in the Midwest all their lives, and the older I get, the less I'm just like, yeah, no, I don't like this winter stuff. I, I'm not, I'm not with it. I, in a perfect world, eat, fit. So when I'm slim or when I'm chubby, I, I'm a little bit in my chubby era right now. Um, but still athletic. I'd rather be walking outside half, half naked. That's just, that's just what it is for me. Um, but I don't want to be disgustingly half naked. That makes sense. So anyway, um, I know that's not what we're talking about. Let's get back to the show. So Emily basically re regressed back to what she was doing in part one and two. And so after the break, after Shannon had her breakdown and everyone got back together, um, Emily has the a mitigated goal to get at, basically kind of put the blame on Jen and Katie, but mainly Jen is in how can she be friends with Alexis when she claims she doesn't like mean girls. And I love Jen because Jen got her together immediately. She's like, girl, but you're friends. You can't say that because you're friends with Tamara. And she's like, but I didn't say that I can't be friends with mean girls. You said that. That's what Emily keeps saying. It's like, but it's the same thing. And it is. <laughs> like, it's literally the same thing. And then she's like, well, have you talked to her? Like, why would, why didn't you, why would you stop her from doing what she was doing? She's like, I tried. We all did. Accurate. And then the producers show, even during the season, they tried to talk some sense, in, sense into her. Everyone did try to talk some sense into Alexis, but she still kept bullying, literally bullying and attacking um, Shannon. Which, crazy enough, because of that antics that they did, I still am so shocked that like Alexis and John are just that dense and that like attention-seeking that they didn't realize that they actually did Shannon a favor versus actually not. If they would have not gotten involved in the show, this season would for Shannon would have been so much worse because we would have been talking more about the DUI. But because they did all this other stuff and did this extra stuff, we are talking about the DUI. And yes, it sucks for Shannon because she's being condemned harshly, but you made her looking like, you made her look like a hero. We're not, we're not condemning Shannon for what she did. She ran into a house and we're not even talking about that. Like, put that in perspective. I mean, I love Shannon, but like, the fact that we never really did talk about that at all this season, and even the reunion, we didn't even speak much on it because of you had the Tamras and the Alexis and the John Jansen of it all being so storyline hungry and attention hungry that they cling on to Shannon's life that we're not even talking about, you know, the real dangers and what Sh Shannon did. I mean, I I'm sorry. Let's call a thing a thing. You know, what's getting me is. Because of the way they were acting, we didn't talk about any of that. And I guess I was, and, the, and maybe that's a little bit of my disappointment for the third part, is that I just cannot stand that we gave John and Alexis that much airtime off of someone else's back. It, I, I'm so annoyed by it. <laughs> I am so annoyed by it. We gave them more than we gave Tamara, and Tamara is actually a full-time housewife. And Tamara's actions were actually more toxic. Well, just, well, actually, not more. They were just as toxic. I would say it was 1A and 1B about how bad both of them were. It's just 
that Tamra dragged three castmates into the mess versus um, John and Alexis. Anyway, so that kind of got resolved there. But then the other unexpected, which made me just go, boo, boo, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Shannon yet again had a change in heart and she was like, Tamara, I saw that you had my back during this reunion a little bit and I appreciate that. And I saw you gave me a look and I know that look when you give that to me and it showed that you were, that you actually care and are concerned. Um, I'm not going to say we're best of friends, but like I'm willing to let some of the things go. So they actually have resolve. And Tamara basically skated out of half the BS that she put herself in yet again. Yeah. Because then, and you can tell Bravo, a.k.a. Andy loves Tamara. And so that's why that's working like that. And um, Tamara's all like, yeah, like... I, I, you know, I, I, I still care and I miss you and I miss our friendship. You know, the rinse and repeat that sh she said for every single season that she's been on the show. And they went back to the whole Trace Amiga thing again. And I hope, because so far, because side note, I actually watch um, Vicki Gunderson. Like, I know, I know she's polarizing and I normally don't support the people who are clear Trumpers. But <laughs> I don't know. There's something about um, Vicky. She's just naturally polarizing and naturally good for TV. Um, clearly, I don't take anything she says seriously. So if I to, if I could put her in a bubble, that's the bubble I put her in. But anyway, um, I actually watched some clips of her podcast here and there, and she still don't see it for Tamara. And I hope she st stands on that. But it looks like from the way this reunion ended um, before even went to an extended thing that happened later on, which we'll get into that shortly. Um, they hugged it out and kind of forgave each other a little bit. And then I love that Jen in the background. I really wish Andy would focus on that more, which is why, damn it, we really need another host. But... Um, I love that Jen was like such bullshit. <laughs> Jen was not seeing it. She's like, oh my God. Again? And Jen was me and probably a lot of the audience. Again? Y'all are good again? I'm so sick of this stuff. I'm sick of this. Stand on it. And everyone else is like, oh, this is so great. And the ones who are saying this is so great is everyone else. Really minus like Jen and like Katie. And I'm just like, okay, so y'all gonna continue to treat Jen like she's like new, new. I know this is her second season, but like, I wish they would have given Jen that respect that she was a fan favorite and let it be known she's a fan favorite. But part of the reason why I feel a certain way about it is because I think it has to do with the seating on the couch. They needed, I wish, like Emily did not need to be seated where she seated at. She should not have been sitting next to Tamara. And actually, Tamara should not have gotten the first seat on the other side. At all. Absolutely not. Put Jen over there. You Like, the, I feel like it would have ended a lot differently if it was like that. In my opinion. But I was just so irritated. I was like, ew. And so, that's how kind of the reunion ended. Like, they end up doing their toast. And the drink of the season was the espresso martinis. And then we had like a couple non-alcoholic drinks. And that actually includes Shannon not drinking. So Shannon didn't drink. Tamara didn't drink. And um, Jen. But Je not Jen. Sorry. I'm um, Gina. Gina hasn't been drinking for like two seasons now. So that's not that surprising. Um, she's, I think she's, I don't know if she's still California sober. But like she did say last season she's California sober. Or there, everyone comes in chat. So, um... Yeah, they end up toasting at the end. Um, side note, I also feel like Tamara. That's why we saw a more conversion of Tamara. She wasn't drinking. 
Which to me, that's giving pathetic. You can't turn up without drinking. Tragic. Anyway, so then we think the reunion's over with, but clearly it's not. Especially if you watch a Peacock version, you know it's not because there's still time left. And so they actually go to 36 hours later and Heather has this like bombshell news. Child, it wasn't as bombshell as they made it seem like. I'm sorry, but it wasn't to me. So they meet at um, Emily's house and it's basically everyone minus Katie and Jen. And this is why I said what I said. Because I'm just like, oh, y'all all want to make sure y'all stay on the show. I can't like, I don't, don't play in my face and make it like, I don't want to see that this is like, and this is my issue similar to like, similar to what's happening here. I, the Salt Lake ladies, Salt Lake City ladies, um, the OGs minus Mary are doing the same crap right now. This is not Survivor. Okay, I know it technically is actually, but like us, the audience shouldn't know that. <laughs> okay, and it's giving, we know that now. So all the ladies are at Emily's house, minus Jen and Katie. Because also too, that's the other side note that was annoying when it came to reunion. They never really did hash out the issue. What is... Jen and Em what is it honestly not Jen what is Emily's beef with Jen like act like what is it really because it was seeping through the whole entire reunion and even this end scene why wasn't Jen at your house yeah Emily still clearly has a hard on for freaking Jen and she needs to rub one out and get over it and we never did get any resolve from that. But, and we didn't really get resolve from Tamara and Jen either. Like, the whole point of the reunion is like, I feel like they're trying so hard to keep um, Shannon and Tamara together, like, bring them back together. And the reason why is because if Shannon and Tamara can't really resolve things, one of them will have to leave the show. It's kind of like um, Real Housewives of New Jersey. Um, Potomac is kind of that because at least according to the network, I don't believe that, but I feel like the network feels that way that, um, and they don't want to, they don't want to get rid of Tamara yet. Cause they just brought her back. That's what it is. And also too, Tamara is a pot stirrer. She just takes it way too far to do it. Um, and honestly, I think the show would survive just fine without her. There's other pot stirrers that can do something and you just need to get rid of some of the dead weight, a.k.a. like Emily. Gina, I'm kind of curious to see what Gina do on, what Gina will do on her own. Because I do find Gina's story a little bit more interesting than Emily's. And I think, honestly, I think, I feel like Emily being on the show actually kind of holds Gina back a little bit. I'll be honest. I, I kind of want to see what it will look like if they weren't on the show together. Anyway, um, so I'm thinking if they don't do a shakeup this coming season, they need to do, they need to do one the following. Um, anyway, <clears throat> so they're at her house and basically Heather states that after the season finale um, party that they had, which was AKA Jen's engagement party, they went to another party, like an after party behind the cameras um, and John was there and, um, Alexis was there. And so it was Tamara. I think Gina ended up going and, um, no, Gina wasn't there. I don't think. I'm not sure. I don't remember if she was there or not. Emily was too drunk, so she wasn't there. And then, um, Heather. And basically we find out that. John heard the whole entire accident and didn't do anything about it. And we, so back to like that um, trip when they were like in um, Northern California for like um, Heather's event and Shannon was consoling Heather. 
Shannon didn't know for sure, but she had a feeling that he would have heard it because it wasn't that far away from his house. And yeah, he heard it. But like, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't think we needed a cliffhanger for that. I, it, to me, it seemed like it was a given. And so then the other suspense thing was like, he was going to go and check up on her. But then her, his daughter said not to because he just got done having a very horrible fight. Um, and also there was allegations that things got physical. Again, I did not need this extra bit for this, but it was telling. The ending of it was telling because they all end up hugging it out at the end. It was very kumbaya-ish and I was like, this is so fake. I just didn't like it. I did not like it. It gave me the ick. Um, but I did not need all that. And Shannon's like, okay, I'm glad I know this now for sure. Like, and she was crying and all that. But, and it's just like, what happens if all this gets out of what all happened? Because Shannon, and I get it. She clearly doesn't remember because she was that wasted. She would not have remembered everything that happened. But I guess the way I see it is, it's clear they're in a toxic relationship. Toxic things happen in a toxic relationship, including usually 99.9% .9 of the time, there's probably going to be some physical altercations that happen. Speaking from my own experience, when I was in my toxic relationship, that happened. Um, it happens. Okay. Um, so I guess I didn't need, as an audience, someone watching it, I did not need to know all that. I feel like if your brain is doing enough of the math, realizing that is a toxic relationship, you can just imagine all the things that are happening behind closed doors with it being a toxic relationship. And for me, because I have been in one, I know how toxic a toxic relationship can get. It could get very dark it can take you outside of who you are as a person. It could bring out the worst in you. And clearly they were not good for each other. Um, I kind of see Shannon based off the show as someone who can be redeemed. John cannot. I think she needs to get a true handle on what's going on with her life. Yes, alcohol is part of it, but I, that ain't all of it. She needs to go actually, just like Tamara claiming she's going to therapy, she needs to do the same thing. Because also, oh, side note, we do find out that like, apparently the therapy session wasn't the day after. She's going the next day, the 36 days later. And I'm just like, ciao. Now I feel like you're just gaslighting me. I don't think she ever really went to therapy at all. I don't believe none of it. But anyway, that is really how the episode ended. And let me know how y'all felt. I just did not love this third part. I was irritated. <laughs> I honestly, if I knew the third part was going to be like that, y'all could just kept that shit and put in the vault. I didn't want it. <laughs> is that bad that I felt that way? I mean, it's just, I think it's because part one and two were so good. And part three just did not land the way I wanted it to. And I did not like how perception wise, the rest of the cast don't seem like they really love Jen. I feel like now they're trying to get Jen off the show because she's a fan favorite. I hope that's not how I see it going, but I don't know. Just the way it ended and Jen's not at your house, but everyone else is. I get why Katie wouldn't be there because Katie might be a one and done, but why wasn't Jen there? Anyway, also it's kind of giving, okay, let's plot for the next season what the storyline's going to be. I don't know. I just don't trust it. And maybe I just have like, I've already am jaded from Housewives. I haven't been watching that long, but I'm already just like, child, play my face if you want to. But anyway, um, try to play my face if you want to, because <laughs> you're not playing my face. I, I, I'm child. Anyway, um, Please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. I'm sorry. I just feel bad because I, I feel really, really bad because everything else was good. It's just this last one did not land for me. And I feel like such a jerk that this last part did not land.
And maybe it's because Jen, justice for Jen, I will always call justice for Jen, number one. Number two, I wanted someone to really get Emily together and just call out the fact she has no storyline. Number three, I wish we could have focused a little bit on the fact that, yes, Shannon really did mess up actually and get all the other like freaking like peanut gallery out of there to kind of have a heart to heart and just really acknowledge that this was wrong. What work has she done? Because also too, yeah, she's taking accountability to a certain extent, but I did not, I really want to know what work she's done. I want to know, did she still have the breathalyzer in her car? I wanted to know that. And we did not know that. We don't know. We don't know. Because it became about these other people who don't freaking matter. A friend of an opportunist, like, freaking leech of a man. Ill. <laughs> Ill. And then Tamara just got let off easily, just like a slap on the wrist after, like, it's not like Jen and Shannon is like, that's the worst. You have been a terror since what you did to Gretchen. I'll never forgive her for what she did to Gretchen. Man, I know, Gretchen, you're happy with your life and you don't want the cameras out in your life again. Please come back to the show. <laughs> I feel like so many people in the audience want her to come back to the show and get Tamara out the paint. Because now, just the way it played out, Tamara is it just, Tamara just golf scot free yet again. I'm so irritated by it. Anyway, but I know what Bravo's doing. They know that people like me will hate watch it. To a, certain extent, to a certain extent. If it gets too toxic, I am turning it off. That's why I did with Jersey. I did not watch all, I did not watch Jersey at all last season. It got, I did not care. As soon as I knew what the direction of what Jersey was going to be giving, I didn't watch it. And honestly, if Potomac didn't have the shakeup that they had this season, I wouldn't be watching that either. Anyway, but that does conclude my video. I know I had a little bit of a rant. I know I had a little bit of a rant at the end. I actually stretched this out and made this longer of a review than I thought it was going to be. But anyway, please like, comment, comment that. <laughs> please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And I guess I'll be talking to you soon because, yeah, the Real Housewives of Potomac, Sunday, aka tomorrow. Anyway, bye! Oh, 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 oh,